What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. Today, we are gonna take a look at how to seafoam your Jeep Wrangler. It's a very simple process and is actually really, really cool. It cleans your engine and you create a huge smoke show. We're gonna talk about what it does, what it doesn't do, and should you do it. Now, before we get started with that, in the last video, we did a catch can giveaway. The winner for that is MG Witcher 6. So MG Witcher 6, if you're watching this, please go down to the comments, leave a comment with your email address, and also shoot me an email to jkgearandgadgets at gmail.com. We're gonna to try to make this a very, very quick video. We have a can of seafoam, a can of the knockoff Walmart seafoam, and then an aerosol seafoam. We're gonna kind of go over the use of all threes of these, and we have a Red Bull here. We're not gonna pour that in our engine. We'll probably give our engine some extra horsepower, give it some wings, but we are gonna be seafoaming my Jeep Wrangler today, and probably the Gladiator as well. Now, a little follow-up from my last video. A lot of you guys watched it. It was the catch can install. Let's see how much oil we have caught in our catch can. Now, the nice thing about this one is that we did have a uh, little dipstick here, but for video purposes, let me go ahead and unscrew it and show you. So this is like uh, three, 400 miles of driving. Now, another question a lot of people had was, hey, what is this crap in here? Why do we need this uh, like st still wool looking stuff? It just helps the oil collect a little bit easier. But if we pull that out, there is some in here inside the catch can. Um, hopefully you can see that. There is a little bit in there, so that's working. So for those of you that did not win, thanks for watching the video, sorry, but hopefully we'll be doing some more giveaways in the future. But this kind of brings us to the reason I am doing this seafoam video. So yes, a lot of you guys did add catch cans. It is gonna stop, you know, it's gonna prevent our engine from getting dirtier over time. But what do we need to do to kind of clean up our engine from the past before we install the catch can? You know, if, if you just installed a catch can at 100,000 miles, you still have all that gunk inside of your engine. How are you gonna clean that out? And that's what we are doing in this video. So right here we have seafoam, knockoff, and the aerosol seafoam. First, let's talk about what seafoam does. All right, so let's go for this real quick without making it extremely boring. This stuff has been around for a very long time, specifically seafoam, not the Walmart knockoff stuff. Um, anywhere from six to nine bucks at pretty much any store, Walmart, AutoZone, all your auto parts stores, you can get it online. There's, they sell it everywhere. What this is gonna do, um, I mean, there's a ton of info on the back. There's different ways to put it inside your engine. Um, there's a lot of different things this does, but pretty much it's going to kind of break down any carbon deposits, any junk inside your engine. It's gonna break it up and kind of loosen it up. So there's many ways to actually put this into your engine. Uh, the first easiest method is just gonna pour this right into your gas tank. You add one ounce per gallon of fuel, but the easiest way to let seafoam clean your engine is just gonna be poured in your gas tank. Now, what is that gonna do? One, it's going to kind of clean up your gas tank. If your uh, TLI or your tank level indicator, you know, your gas gauge is kind of sticking over time, there might be some gunk build up in there from bad fuel. This is gonna help loosen that up. So first we're gonna clean our fuel tank. Secondly, it's gonna go through our fuel tank, through our fuel lines and to our engine. While it runs through there, it's going to kind of clean our injectors if they get clogged up over time, and it's going to mix in with our fuel when it goes into the engine. So it's gonna clean the intake, it's gonna clean the valves, it's gonna clean the top of the pistons, does a lot of good stuff. Now the downside to just pouring in your gas tank is that you know this is mixing with a ton of fuel, like 20 gallons. So it's gonna take a long time and many, many bottles of this stuff cycling through your tank in order to kind of get a benefit of actually cleaning your engine. So that's kind of like the least preferred method, but it is definitely the easiest. I do it on all my vehicles. I at least pour a little bit in there every once in a while, um, every couple tanks, keep everything happy. Now, the second method is to pour this into our intake system. So that's what we're gonna show you in this video, and that's probably what you've seen before, where your Jeep is just smoking everywhere. It's a lot of fun. It's definitely the most direct method of cleaning your engine. Now over here, we do have an aerosol can. I've never used this stuff before, but uh, this is, we'll show you how it works. I've never used it, but it's pretty simple. You just hook it into your throttle body and spray it instead of pouring it. We'll take a look at that later. But does this stuff work? Yes, I've used it a lot of times in the past there are times when you don't wanna use this on your engine. So if you're somebody that has 150, 160 plus thousand miles on your Jeep, there's probably a lot of gunk built up in there. And you've probably seen videos of people saying, oh, this stuff sucks, don't use seafoam. It pretty much boils down to, if your engine has a ton of miles, at that point, just leave it that way. Uh, the reason being, if we pour this stuff in there and it loosens up that 
all of that stuff inside your engine, it's gonna shoot out of the exhaust, and where does it go? It's gonna go into your catalytic converters and possibly clog them. But at some point, if you have a lot of miles on your Jeep, it might do more harm than it would do good. So let's get started. Holy crap, that was a lot of talking. Trying to make this video quick, I promise guys, I promise. Now, we are gonna talk a little bit real quick. Cassie's over here. We are gonna start up the uh, the LS swap video soon. <laughs> It's been crazy, guys. We, Cassie and I, we don't do this full time. We are not full time YouTubers. We have jobs. My job's been getting very busy lately. So, and I know Cassie's has too. So, <laughs> we're uh, we're doing the best we can. I know this probably isn't the most entertaining video either, but the LS swap's coming soon, and I have a secret for you guys. Hopefully, not with figured out logistically, oh, it's so good. but might not be doing an LS swap. Might be going to a Hemi swap. Oh, um, oh. Just kind of things are falling in place. Literally out of luck. Out of luck. No, nah, not really luck. I mean, it's going to cost a lot, I but mean, I think, yeah, um, so but yeah, I think I think a lot of people will be excited for that. So stay tuned for all that in this video. We're sticking to seafoam. So Cassie, but, film, man, I, I need, we're going to show them the very first way to seafoam their Jeep. Now, a lot of you probably are asking what's the difference between the Walmart knockoff and the seafoam. No idea, guys. No idea. <laughs> but it's probably pretty much the exact same. I'm just going to pour this in my fuel tank. Step number one, pour it in your fuel tank. I do about half of it. It is going to kind of stabilize our fuel. If we have any water in our fuel, it's gonna help suck that water out. This stuff kind of absorbs the water and then sends it through your engine. So it is good for your gas tank. Do it in the Gladiator too. Boom. Now you could stop here over time, you know, probably 10 bottles or something um, over the course of a couple thousand miles. It is gonna slowly clean your engine, but it's just not the, uh, it's not the best method. The next thing we're gonna talk about is how to sea foam your Jeep the fun way. For that, we are not gonna do it in the neighborhood. This is going to create a ton of smoke. It's gonna look like something's on fire or we're doing burnouts, which my Jeep can't do. Um, <laughs> yes. So we are going to go somewhere a little more secluded so we don't get the cops called on us. So let's hop in both Jeeps, hit the road, and go sea foam the crap out of these babies. All right, we are here in the middle of nowhere. It's a perfect place to do this seafoam treatment. So we're gonna hop out, we're gonna do it on the JK first. We're gonna come out here now that our engine is at operating temp, we're gonna pop the hood. This is a two person job, so it's definitely more than a two hand job. Mostly being that we're gonna have to be pouring this in. <laughs> as he's running around. We're gonna have to pour this into our engine while somebody's inside revving the engine. We'll show you. It's, it's not overly complicated, but we're gonna find our brake booster, the hose, which is over here behind my globbed mess, air compressor and wire, but right here, we're gonna disconnect this guy. It goes right to our brake booster, uh, which is the big round thing. Now, what's gonna happen is Cassie's gonna be inside revving the Jeep, holding it around 2000 RPMs. I'm gonna slowly pour this in and it's gonna suck it into the engine. This goes directly into our intake manifold. That's what creates the vacuum on the brake booster. While we're pouring this in there, the engine's gonna start stumbling a little bit. We're gonna continue pouring it while she's revving the engine. And then at some point, probably once we're down about half a bottle, I'm gonna pour a lot more in there once the engine almost starts to die, she's going to kill the engine. So we're gonna run through that on video. It's not overly complicated. The big thing is that we don't wanna to pour too much inside here at once and kind of lock up our engine because you gotta think like we're pouring almost fuel into the engine, causing it to run extremely rich. And we don't wanna like put too much in there and lock up our engine. So I'm gonna get my chest GoPro mount. Cass is gonna be in there. Let's do it. All right, here we go. Rev her up. You can see how it's kind of sucking it in there. All right, now I'm gonna dump a bunch in there. All right, kill it. All right. So we poured about half of the bottle into the intake. Yep, right around half right now. What we're gonna do is sit here for about five to 10 minutes What's happening is right at the end when I dumped a lot more in and she killed the engine is it's making sure that the sea foam, the actual contents of it are sitting on top of the engine. So all of our pistons hopefully have a layer of sea foam on there. It's kind of sitting on our valves and it's hot soaking is what they call it. So it's really sitting there and kind of absorbing all of that 
you know, carbon buildup and all of that gunk. Plus with the engine being hot, it's gonna start loosening it up. So we're gonna let it sit here, do its work, kind of clean up the engine. And here in a few minutes, once we start it up, we're gonna drive this thing hard. And what that's gonna do is burn up all of that crap and shoot it out of our exhaust, causing a bunch of smoke. You're gonna see, it's gonna be awesome. Let's do it. So it is gonna kind of stumble a little bit, not only on startup, but when we first drive it, uh, just getting all of that crap out of here. Let's see. Yeah, sometimes it takes a minute. You definitely don't want to forget to hook up your brake booster. Give it a few revs. Let's drive out of here nice and hard. want to do it like in your driveway in your neighborhood if you live around a bunch of people um, and then part of that coming out of there is just the sea foam burning off and then the other part is all of that carbon buildup burning out through the exhaust so definitely a lot of smoke and it smells so that did not create near as much smoke as it normally does. It might have been because we kind of jumped the gun, did it a little too early. But you know how I was saying we were going to show you how to do this one, the aerosol version on the JT? Well, I'm a dummy. I brought a socket with me. And what we have to do is disconnect our air intake, the box, the hose, right from our throttle body. I brought the wrong size. I think this is a 10 or 11 millimeter. This size is actually for the JK over there. So. We are gonna show you how to do this one on the JK, but we are going to go ahead and seafoam the JT. So with the JT, we're gonna do the method that we just did, sucking it through the, uh, the brake booster hose. And then on the JK, once it kind of cools down, we're gonna do it again with this bad boy. So this the vacuum system on the JTs and JLs looks a little different. So this is like a crimped connection down here on our brake hose assembly. Um, we could pop this clip off right here. So the preferred method probably on these newer vehicles is this, the aerosol spray that goes right in. That's probably why they started uh, making that kind. I'm gonna see if I can mess with this connector and disconnect it here. All right, same thing, fire it up and hold the RPMs. Rev it up. All righty, plug this girl back up. We're gonna let it sit for about, I think this time we're gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes. So for this one, it's a little bit different. Very simple, like I mentioned earlier, we are gonna have to undo our intake boot. Luckily I have the tool for this and we're gonna pop our intake off. All right, I'm looking at this diagram, it's really not. The diagram is like not, is this missing a piece? Like, see how it loops and it goes up? This doesn't have like a full loop. I'm seeing it going oh, like this, but like that. it's not on the right. That's a slightly different. So it is like not this. to scale. Like that? Yeah. But then how's the boot gonna go over there? I can't, let me see. The boot's not gonna fit over. Um... All right, what we're doing is ditching <laughs> that little thing. So I think, I think our issue here is because I'm running this adapter, we have the Viper throttle body, which is bigger. Oh. I had to use this reducer to fit on here. Um, so maybe like a factory one, this opening has enough room to kind of get in there. I don't know, on this setup, it's not gonna work. Plus I, I just, I don't like this idea of this sitting halfway in our throttle body. Cause what happens if it comes loose and sucks into the engine? I don't know. So we're gonna leave the throttle body kind of open. I'm gonna grab the spray and just spray it directly in there. And this instruction says you are supposed to empty this entire bottle in one shot, approximately seven minutes. We're gonna be here seven minutes spraying. I don't know. We're going to empty a lot of this into here. It's already been seafoamed once, so we're going to do it again. Meanwhile, the JT is probably ready. Let's go ahead and empty this bottle. Okay. All right, kill it. That method takes a lot longer. A lot longer. Foot was cramping. Your foot was cramping? <laughs> All right, so we're going to let this sit for a while. I'm going to hook up the intake and everything, and we're going to go fire up the Gladiator. So hopefully you guys are still sticking around. I know this isn't the most entertaining video. I know it's not, but 
haven't been ha haven't been able to get into uh, too many crazy projects. Work's been keeping me really busy. Same with Cassie, but we do have some really cool stuff coming. And I figured this video, there's a few people that requested it. You know, they were asking on the uh, the last video with the catch can, like, oh, what do I do now? You know, how do I get rid of everything that's built up? This will do that. It's gonna help a lot. So, um, you know, plus videos like this, they're cheap and it is a good idea to do this. So that's enough talking. Let's button stuff up and fire up the gladiator. Nothing. Oh, there we go. It's starting to come out. Keep, yeah. That's fine. All right, drive it around a little bit. We go so once again not too much smoke out of there which is actually honestly a good thing it is fun seeing a ton of smoke but you know the fact that uh, there's not too much smoke coming out is telling me that our engines are fairly clean who knows maybe having the catch can on for the past couple hundred miles uh, is kind of keeping the engines relatively clean so there's no fresh oil to really burn off who knows, that's the only thing I can think of um, because I know like the JK, the engine is probably disgusting internally. So only thing I can think of is maybe the fact that there's not like fresh oil inside of the engine is maybe why it's not producing as much smoke right off the bat. I'm not too sure. That's, uh, and I'm not a scientist either. So we'll see when she comes back if it's still smoking. Usually it's like plummeting. Oh, she's getting it. Get it. Oh. Now that we've done the gladiator, it's time for the JK, the second go around. Here we go. Let's see, you ready? Let's go ahead. I'll move up. She's smoking bit. already. Letting the Jeep sit there for a little bit longer, it definitely smoked a lot more this go round. Uh, don't know if I got it on camera though, because I was trying to take a picture at the same time. I'm terrible at multitasking, um, but definitely let it sit for like closer to the 10 minutes. Like it says on the bottle, a lot more smoke will come out. So I'm curious, do you think the aerosol works better? I don't know if it would have been, well you used the whole, did you use the whole bottle? No, so the first time on the Seafoam when I did it through the intake, I used half a can on the JK, than half a can on the Gladiator, whereas the aerosol I used, uh, you're straight up ignoring me. So, <laughs> on the on the uh, the JK with the aerosol, I pretty much used the entire can. So who knows? Maybe maybe it was using the maybe whole can, it was using the it whole can and letting it sit longer, or maybe the aerosol works better. But it's the same formula, which so I don't think the aerosol does any better. Um, I think maybe just the fact that we used more of it and we let it sit for a little bit longer. But I think the test is complete. We will follow up with something. I don't know, is it gonna run better? You're not gonna notice too much of a difference, but inside of your engine, it is gonna help kind of clean up those carbon deposits, not only on your pistons, your intake valves, your intake, um, but it really just kind of cleans up everything in there. Along with pouring it in your gas tank, it's good preventative maintenance. So I think that's good gonna be do. it for this video. We'll do a giveaway. It's a cheap thing to do too. If you leave a comment and say you wanna be entered in a free can of seafoam. I'll get one on Amazon. Hopefully Amazon sells them and say, ship them. Yeah. I think so. And uh, I'll ship one to you. The Woo, you get so, a big old giveaway, guys. Big old giveaway. But thank you so much for watching. As always, please give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more Jeep videos. I know the past couple ones have been a little bit, eh, I don't know about Beautiful. that, Ben. Get the LS swap done yeah, before Christmas. We have a lot of work to do. Some big upcoming upgrades. Hopefully a Hemi for this bad boy soon. We'll tell you about that if it happens. Well, we already have one Hemi. Yeah, and yeah, we got some other stuff to show you. <laughs> we got a lot of videos to catch up on, guys. I'll see you later.